Perfectus in Mundo. Chapter 5. Written by Bobo the Hobo. Find Bobo the Hobo on DeviantArt for even more stories. And visit patreon.com slash Bobo the Hobo. Pledge at a certain tier to join the exclusive Discord channel, to chat with other weight gain story fans, and even the hobo himself. Over the coming weeks, Aubrey would learn a lot about how things were different for her now. If not necessarily, why? The basics she more or less already understood. Here, her mother coddled her and her sister and fed them until they were beyond full. Here, she was a big, fat dynamo who gathered stares of admiration and was considered a solid eight on the dating scene. Here, the world had catered to her fantasy of being a big, beautiful woman in almost every conceivable way. Here, there were moving sidewalks and wide doorways and stretchy clothes and people who appreciated the fact that she weighed more than 600 pounds. This was, without an exaggeration, a dream come true for her. It had taken some getting used to, for sure. Her appetite alone was an entire crash course in living with the downsides of her weight. She thought about food almost constantly, where it came from, when it was going to be there, what it would pair well with, and how much of it she thought that she could eat before she barfed. Every meal in her house was a spectacular display of gastronomic daring, and for once she had a mother who would not only enable her to eat as much as she wanted, but encourage her to go further. Here you go, baby, have a little more. Thank you, Mama. Here... Instead of feeling like the sheltered wallflower and coming short to her sister Riley, Aubrey felt like the favorite child. She was downright spoiled with the way her mother doted on her constantly, making sure that she always had plenty to eat and always offering to cook up her favorite meals. Even with her own higher weight, she always made sure to do the footwork for both her and her sister, so that they never had to leave the table if they didn't want to. Hey, Brie, you want my plate? Sure thing. Load me up! And whereas Riley had been the stunning head-turner before the switch— now it was all but obvious that Aubrey was the looker in the family. With her adorably chubby face and pinchable chins, plus her enormous amounts of TNA, not to mention an adorably squishy gut, her phone had been blowing up almost nonstop since she had woken up in this strange reality. Her various inboxes over social media were full of messages from people from high school, people from college, and plenty of people that she didn't actually know sending her messages, asking her out, some lewd pics, which was kind of gross. But the attention was nice. Here, Aubrey was getting to live out her fantasy of being the biggest, most beautiful woman. And it had showed in the way that she had started to attack life, going out on dates, meeting up with friends, and actually enjoying her big, fat, fabulous life. For once, everything was coming up, Aubrey. I think I'm going to head upstairs, she said with a contented, cheerful smile. You mind helping me up? Oh, yeah. Sure. Riley pushed herself back from the table with an angry scrape against the wood floor. Here, just let me. In the weeks that she had spent in this strange world, Aubrey had gained more than 20 pounds. On top of her already ample frame, it didn't seem like much. But with the constant eating that she did, and the little movement that this world actually facilitated, it wasn't much of a surprise. Her stomach hung a little lower, her breasts a little heavier, and her ass a little wider. It didn't seem like much when she was already so huge to begin with, but she had been intimately aware of almost every pound that she'd gained since she'd crossed over into this weird world, and she'd been loving every single one of them. Nobody judged her for her desires, and nobody made her feel like she was weird. In fact, most people reacted quite positively to the now 620-plus pounds of Aubrey that would waddle down the sidewalks and take up entire booths and restaurants. Everyone absolutely encouraged her to do what she saw fit and eat what she wanted, and that kind of attitude was so contagious that she had started to forget what it had ever been like back when she was a skinny little wallflower. Although, getting up the stairs was an absolute nightmare. I think I'm going to ask Mama if I can move into the guest bedroom downstairs. Come to think of it, why hadn't she? If this world was as perfect as it seemed, shouldn't she have already moved into the room where it was the least amount of trouble for her to get from place to place? Maybe it was because that her room was already upstairs when the change had happened, and that reality was changed from there? Honestly, she didn't claim to understand the whole process of whatever had happened. She was just happy that she got to live out the life that she'd always wanted, and didn't see fit to question a good thing. But that being said, she would look into seriously asking her mother about moving downstairs. Hauling one leg after the other had become an exhausting effort that, honestly, just took her from staying in her room all of the time to staying in the living and dining rooms all the time. She had started returning to her bedroom almost exclusively to sleep, what with her new booming social life and her hounding eating schedule, it would be hard to actually blame her. But more importantly, it was getting harder and harder to actually fit into her bedroom. Aubrey had never noticed, at least not since she had first awoken in this strange reality, 
that her love handles and saddlebag thighs brushed so coarsely against the doorframe. Even turning sideways, difficult considering that her room was directly at the top of the staircase, meant that the crest of her gut and the breadth of her ass were the ones brushing against the frame rather than her impossibly wide hips and meaty flanks. She would enter her room, and any other, belly first. Her spare tire led the way with its solid droop and thick heft, rolling over the crease that used to be her belly button, and then leading into the great spread of her lower tier of tummy, then her chest, and then the bulge of her thighs. And after two big girl steps inside, her ass would crest the doorway and she would, finally, be inside in full. It hadn't dawned on her just how small her room had seemed when they had been kids. She'd always assumed that her room was better than Riley's because it was on the top floor. But weighing in at more than 600 and 20 pounds, she'd come to see that perhaps the room wasn't as glamorous as she had thought. Barely a few steps in, and she was already at her bed. With her fat gut and wide hips, she barely had enough room to turn without knocking something over. If she didn't move bedrooms, she was for sure going to have to rearrange things or have her mama help her. Just thinking about it made her tired. But the extra room would certainly pay off if her dating life kept going as swimmingly as it had been. Actually, with that in mind, she'd probably need a sturdier bed frame. As she lowered her incredible bulk onto the mattress, the poor thing had only grown more and more against supporting her weight. She was honest to God so fat that she was making this thing creak and groan just by laying on it. And whenever she dared to try and venture to masturbation, the top drawer on her nightstand now filled with tools necessary to do so at her size, courtesy of Amazon, she could swear that the whole house could hear it. But honestly, she didn't care. Aubrey was having the absolute time of her life and couldn't think of a time that she'd been happier. Her mother fawned over her. Her sister was jealous of her. Ladies loved her. And more importantly, she was literally the biggest, fattest woman in town. Everyone stared at her, gawking at her size or ogling her for her apparent beauty. People would constantly come up to her and tell her how gorgeous she was, all while she stuffed her face with so much food that she could barely see straight. Life was, for the first time in a very, very long time, really, really good. Perfectum in mundo, she said out loud with a contented smile. Her hands pressed tightly into the flanks of her stomach as she gave it a wobble. That's what that stupid coin said, right? She hadn't thought much about her coin collection since all of this had started. Truthfully, she didn't think much about it until she acquired a new coin. But in replacing it to the bottom shelf of her nightstand, now that her top shelf had more carnal emergency, she had started to think about it here and there. More specifically, that strange coin that she had come across with Kara that night in the pawn shop. I haven't seen Kara since I got here. Aubrey wondered idly as she struggled to reach the second drawer. I wonder what she looks like now. There it was. The little gold coin had never had any trouble standing out from the rest of the others that littered the bottom of her drawer. Picking it up, she could still feel its heft and weight. Coming from me, that's really saying something. Aubrey purred as she fingered the coin idly with one hand, fondling her fat belly with the other. Every now and then, she thought about the day that she'd found this thing. The day that everything had changed for her. The day that her life finally started to turn in her favor. If not, rather abruptly. I should, really. Herc. Aubrey struggled to haul one elephantine leg onto the mattress and then the other. Phew. I should really give Kara a call. Even in reaching for her cell phone, Aubrey kept one eye on the coin as it traveled from one finger to the next. She had forgotten how pretty this thing was. The reason that she'd kept it in the first place was because it was such an odd little thing with so much heft behind it. And like most times when presented with a coin, Aubrey idly positioned it on the nail of her thumb. Placing it in a position to be flipped, she flicked her short, stubby appendage and launched the coin surprisingly high into the air. Opening her palm with that same sense of recognizance that had guided her hand to catch the coin before, she laid her hand flat so that the small piece of metal could land heads up on the outstretch of her palm. And, in the blink of an eye, everything was back to normal. End of chapter 5